Okay, we're back. Um, I'm just making this little V cut here. I'm just making it more distinct where that that feather is going underneath and we're just rounding off things. You know, the feathers are not squared by any means. And uh, we're just going to taper this off down a little further. Just blend it all in. So, okay, so that's roughly how you do it. That's how we did the one side, okay? And we'll do the other side here, same way. You know, follow that in from your other feather and then just put a little bead cut in there. Same thing here. Another little, another little V cut. And then it goes underneath. Alright. See how thick that looks? You can get rid of that, folks. What you do is just make this a little deeper here. And actually what you want to do is maybe trim this one up from the other side, just like so. Alright. And then we're just going to lay that Make that a little thinner there. Same here. I'm going to work on that a little bit later and uh, make that all look like it's. See how that's laying when we have that sitting down the way it is? Um, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's our feathering in the back. Um, the other thing we need to do is distinguish our feathers here around the body. So we actually have this one going underneath. So we're going to start putting our little, I'm going to put our little cuts in. Actually, I'm going to burn the head for the feathering when we're, when we're completely done, okay? So, um, if you don't have a wood burner, it's been suggested that you buy one. Uh, I did go to one of the chain stores here not too long ago to see what they had and um, well when you have this done let me explain this first you have this done just go back and just make a little little cuts be very very careful careful make sure your knives are nice and sharp okay see how we have this we're, okay I see it <laughs> sometimes I can't always see where I put the lines but okay so that's what you want to do all the way around Okay, all the way around. And I'm, I have this here. And I'm going to make a longer one here. Make sure they meet up where the corners are, where the points are. Okay. I'm just going around this whole thing. Hair siren going off a, outside. Not sure about that. I don't have it quite where I thought. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so this one comes up underneath. This needs to be cut out. Just like so. Okay. What I was explaining, if you do not have a a um a wood burner you need to buy one and the one I use is a detail master I've had it for over 25 years um, I rechange I've changed the 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 handles and uh, you know the blades on them um, the hand pieces but you're welcome to uh, use the ones at one of the chain stores I looked at it I you know for a beginner I always suggest if, you, if this is a hobby that you enjoy folks Put money into a, a good burner. If you're going to spend $35 or $40 for uh, one at one of the chain hobby stores um, that you have no control over the temperatures, then you're better off spending the extra $60 or $70 more to buy one for you know a detail master or whatever's out there. Uh, again, I stress to you folks over and over again: go to a carving show. You'll see and be able to see and feel your tools and and try them out you know there um, you want to uh, be able to um, be able to uh, experiment you know and, and try them out that's a great way of doing it if you have that opportunity if you don't 
you know if you buy one I'm sure you're not going to be disappointed with it um, they come with a standard blade um, what I usually use when I wood carve is uh, this is the one I've been using it's a very small little blade uh, the tapes on there for the heat this is an older model um, but there is one that's a little more uh, it's a little thicker it goes down a little further and across and um, that's the standard size that one there I used for another project I was, was working on but you know it don't hesitate to to buy a good wood burner okay folks so with that said uh, we're not to the point of burning yet, so if you want to order something, that's fine. You, any of the supply houses would have it. Okay, I need to be careful here uh, with cutting this out because this is going against the grain here on the end. So you want to just be very, very careful with it. All right. So when you have this done, the next step is going to be more fun. The next step are these other feathers underneath, and I, I, I will sand everything out after I get all the feathers on. So what we're going to do is that that it comes to a little bit of a a rounded point like that. Okay, so we're going to do that along here. Some of this will be underneath, and I want to explain something really quickly to you if I can. Uh, I have a minute or so left. If you haven't seen my patterns for doing feathering, here's what you need to remember when you do feathers. Just real quick here. When you do a feather, to break up the monotony of the shingle look, okay, this is the feathers, okay. See how that looks like a shingle? Okay. How to get away from that is this. I can move this over a pad here, I'll show you. You put you do your first and then you skip a little bit you put a little bit of a space in and you put it together or a little space and then you start putting your other ones on okay now your second row what you can do to get rid of that is put a feather on top of a feather okay um, just like that and then you can continue on and and then put another feather on top of a feather that's how you get rid of that that look of uh, that shingle look. See how that broke up the pattern? It's putting a feather on top of a feather. Okay folks, so we're out of time. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this on the next segment. Okay, so by the time I, well, when we come back, we'll, I'll have this all put on here and I'll show you how to cut that out and then we'll be ready to sand it before we actually put the eyes in in the bill.